What's going on everybody? So it is Monday, day five on the project. I can tell you definitively the chipperness and excitement of last Monday is not here. Rick worked my ass off last week, so I wasn't really as excited to be here this morning as I was last Monday. But regardless, we are here ready to go back at it. I did not film on Friday, so I'll give you a quick overview of what we did. Um, up front here, there is a culvert that starts right up here. You can kind of see, let me raise you up a little bit. Maybe you can see that's where the culvert starts. Runs all the way through here. And this is where we left it off. The reason we did not complete it is because that pile of 6A is gonna need to move so that we can finish that out. Um, we brought in another load of stone, uh, retaining wall block, stone, whatever, rock, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It's Monday. I'm not going to try to try to talk in a good way on Monday morning, but yeah, so here's part of it. Here's part of it. And you can kind of see some back there peeking around the edge in the backyard. So we got that delivered and unloaded. By the way, that's our CX-80 with a thumb. We'll get some video of me unloading a truck with that because it was a hundred times faster than trying to do it with the skid with forks. So we got that delivered, got it unloaded. That was end of day, Friday. The other big thing we did is we worked on our retaining wall down here. We had to take the first, sorry, the second and the third course off to reset it and pull it forward. The homeowner wanted it pulled forward a little bit. He didn't want it staggered back quite as much. I think it's safer built, stackered back, but he wanted what he wanted. So here's what we've got on the retaining wall. We've got three courses. We've got one more to go before we jump up to the next tier. So that's what my goal is this morning. Rick went to take the other CX-80 back, the one that doesn't have the thumb. So my goal for this morning is I'm gonna try to set the fourth row on this wall the retaining wall that's on the far side of the property, I don't know if you remember it or not, you're gonna see it here in a minute in the video that I do, but we're gonna go back up there and we're gonna add another course to it, just kind of at the top of the hill, just to blend it a little better. So I'm gonna set this row, I'm gonna run over there, set, I don't know, probably five or six block on that retaining wall. There's the little retaining wall in the front of the house that I'm gonna set like three or four little stones on he wants to do another course higher on that one even though rick and i totally disagree that it needs to go higher that's what the homeowner wants so we're gonna do it and then if rick is still not back by the time i got all that done we started cutting down the backyard here with the cx80s we had two of them on friday and we started cutting down the yard while we were waiting for the truck of stone to arrive so I will start working on completing that. And we're getting, we've got it somewhat close on being cut down. It took a lot of the dozer work out of this, honestly, in my opinion. I mean, we'll still use the dozer just cause it's such a big lot to grade, but I would say most of the cutting that I was gonna do with the dozer, I don't know, we're probably 70% of the way there. So it's not gonna take nearly as much dozer work as we originally anticipated because we just spent 45 minutes dinking around in the CX-80s. So that's where we're at. That's a quick update of the job. I'm gonna shut this off, find some motivation, possibly take another drink of coffee, and I'll meet you in the machine here in a minute and we'll set some rocks. See you in a minute.
I have, uh, oh, f I can't talk while we're tracking. Alright, so what I've done so far, put a little more 6A behind the wall up here, got it brake level, and then uh, I spotted about six rocks here, brought those up so we can start placing them. It's not going to take many, it's just up here where the wall, or where the, uh, there's a little ridge on the top of the hill, we're just going to place, I don't know, five or six from from about here over to where that 6A is kind of wide there. We'll just do one more tier just to kind of blend that hill a little better. So, let's see here, which rocks do a one to put where?
got her on her tippy toes. Right, guys quick update so uh, there's the additional stones we set up there nothing magic or special uh, let's walk down here to the retaining wall it's about one o'clock so I've been at it for oh three and a half hours Rick is uh, on his way back he lost trailer brakes on the trailer so he had to run that by the trailer place so here's the retaining wall I've got the fourth layer on and I'm working on backfilling now. I apologize for wind noise, as always. It is what it is. So, it doesn't look too bad. It turned out all right. You know, it's not some of my finest work, but for a Monday, I'm okay with it. 
I'm also in a much better mood now, now that I'm awake at one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm feeling good. So here's what we've got. I took, uh, I took the fourth layer, set it, and then backfilled everything with 6A. Uh, and we're gonna stay about, you know, four to six inches roughly from the top so that we can soil over the top and they can have grass grow. But this is going to allow all of the water that's coming off of this hill is gonna dive into the 6A and it will actually seep through the wall. That's why I'm not messing with fabric is because there's gonna be so much runoff that's able to come through this wall. I'm really not worried about the stone getting contaminated and clogged and, you know, you just don't, you don't have the issues on this wall that you would with a tighter fitting wall, like with those uh, Unilock bricks or with, uh, why can I not think of the name of the, whatever the big Legos were that I just made videos on that the name escapes me for whatever reason. Anyway, those fit a lot tighter together so water can't freely run through them. But on this particular stone, we've got gaps that are like, I don't know, four inches across in places just because of how the rough cut stones fit together. So there's gonna be a ton of ability for water to get through this wall. So I'm really not worried about it blowing out from water. So, no fabric, backfilling. Let's hop in the excavator and finish this out. All right, so the other thing I forgot to mention, the reason I'm cutting this wide swath here is we're gonna have a second retaining wall that's gonna go back in this area here. So we're gonna leave about the skid steer width that's gonna be landscaped, and then we're gonna start our second retaining wall. The homeowner's wanting to go up either three or four stones. I think that's gonna to be too high. He's wanting to hit, let's spin here so you can see the house. He's wanting the dirt to hit about, I think on the, th through the top of the second brick. So about eight inches up that wall. I'm not gonna get into arguing with the homeowner on why that's a, not a good idea to start getting dirt up that high on the wall. I'm, I'm fully aware of it, so I don't get any corrections in the comments. I'm fully aware, I brought it to the homeowner's attention. He's dead set. Uh, the one thing we did notice is there, is there are no weepers on this, so at least he's got that going for him. Um, but yeah, if it were me personally, I wouldn't be taking it that high. So. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut this area down like we are right now. When Rick gets back with the laser, we're gonna set the laser up and shoot that brick ledge against the house. Then we will transfer that over to our grade here and work backwards to figure out how low we need to start our footer. Then we'll add our 10 inches for our footer and that'll give us our final depth that we need to be for this wall. So that's gonna be an adventure. But in the meantime, let's keep cutting. throw the dirt out like I totally meant to do that. I've said it before in another video, but I'm really impressed with the digging ability of this CX-80. I have not been super happy with the craning abilities when we were working on the other retaining wall, where I was craning those block into place. Uh, wasn't super happy with that, but for digging, uh, this machine is fantastic. Super smooth, it's got a lot of power, and it's pretty quick, so. I'm 
to be gentle because I'm going to be quite irritated if I start moving my rocks around. some other poor souls, but we'll see what happens. I mean, look at all the garbage in here. I'm assuming there was a place that, uh, they were doing some excavation, and they were trying to get rid of Phil for free. Because this has a job site written all over it with the chunks of concrete, retaining wall block, asphalt, fabric, old sprinkler lines. Everything about it screams fill off of a uh, dirt job somewhere for a commercial property. And of course this guy just ate it right up because it was free dirt and he didn't have to deal with the consequences. So a quick tip for those of you who are not super versed on running an excavator. When we're doing a lot of fast digging and you're wanting to be fast and efficient, uh, one thing to think about, you really, a lot of people get in the habit, and I did this too, you get in the habit of you dump your bucket and then as you're turning, you're booming up, you're sticking in, but then you get around here to make your next pass and you're immediately booming down and sticking out. If you notice, if I start turning the excavator, when I start doing multiple functions, my, my turn speed slows down. So if you wanna dig fast in an excavator, if you're really looking for production, the goal is to do as little, uh, as few mo, man, I can't even talk, let's try that again. The goal is you wanna do as few motions as possible at the same time. So right now, all I'm doing is turning, all I'm doing is emptying my bucket. I'm not gonna boom in or stick, you know, boom up or stick in. I'm not gonna do out. I'm gonna leave that right where it is and I'm just gonna turn. That way all the hydraulic power is in my turn. Now I'm gonna make my pass and I'm actually gonna start throwing dirt further. So I'm gonna stick out here. I'm just turning. Now I'm gonna stick out, dump, and I'm not gonna stick in. We're just gonna turn. Because if I started to stick in, first of all, look, I've got to reach just as far, so that would have wasted a ton of time. And it would have wasted time because it would have slowed our turn down. So when you're really wanting to cycle fast, you don't want to do a bunch of movements while you're spinning the machine. So, not a super amazing tip, but it's a tip nonetheless. Good night, that is a lot of crap. Apparently I just got into a pile of block. There's a whole pile of block apparently buried there. That's pretty neat. Pretty excited about all that. 
gonna be even better when we start digging in our footer for our next wall. Edge of the drain field? I see stone. I think that's the edge of his drain field. probably after we get this compacted I'll throw down a little bit more stone and we'll grade it out and just for the record I know the squeaking's driving you nuts it's driving me nuts too I've greased this thing twice there there must be that's one of those main pin mount thumbs and there's got to be some zerk fitting I'm either missing or it's just not getting in there but it's driving me absolutely insane but yes I do grease my machine so just don't I don't want to hear about it okay I had to deal with it all day long. You can suffer through it for the three minutes in this video. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, everybody, this is the wrap up video. I'm not actually gonna walk around the entire job. Instead, I'm gonna leave you with a drone shot. And I have 3% battery left on the GoPro. So if this suddenly just chops off, you'll know exactly why. I just ran out of battery. So, 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 so. Um, yeah, we got the lower wall finished today. We got the footer in for the top wall. You'll see that in the drone shot. Uh, got the third row on the little retaining wall up by the house. We got the extra row up on this retaining wall here. And then I got even more dirt cut out of the backyard, if you can believe it or not. We're cutting a ridiculous amount of dirt. So I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm gonna send you over to drone footage and we'll call that a day and we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Have a good one.